Good morning, folks. We're starting in our lab. You've all seen how we can make the super lithographic pillars with electricity, even burning the rock back together in some cases, but we've never studied the metal plate with which we work. This is not only a hint at the discharge force as well underground, but it looks terrifyingly like cellular development. Nucleus. Inner material. Cell membrane. You can even see mitosis if you have a little bit of an imagination. Top news today is at Madagascar. The first Uyen system candidate is now pushing Category 4 and 5 status as she's taken the energy and made it work. I said yesterday's channel storm wasn't an issue, but I was wrong to ignore the convergence tail swinging northwest. The storms remain today, heading east. In Europe, the systems are still just offshore, affecting the southwestern coastlines more than any other as of right now. Meanwhile, the Pacific system is still bringing moisture to America's west coast, and another low in the central states, creating a major temperature convergence. We had a gamma ray burst last night, came out of the Hydra constellation. News after the fact, that X flare we had the past weekend created one of the largest ionization events in our atmosphere that we've ever noticed. This was not due to the size of the flare, but Earth's weakening magnetosphere allowing a greater effect. Solar wind ain't doing a thing. We're all calm geomagnetically. Solar flaring is slowed, but with some moderate pops, including a limb eruption this morning. The sunspot situation is bleaker. The largest active region on the disk is magnetically separated, with only minor mixing potential in the middle. We'll set eyes on the developing groups and the mature groups incoming from the limb. The next coronal hole is incoming between those blue coronal fields. It will ramp the earthquake condition index, but not as much as if it hadn't lost almost all of its equatorial strength. Indeed, you see it's the polar darkness encroaching much better. Now, when it comes to quaking, it seems that the western U.S. is waking up now to what's happening in Oklahoma, California, and Yellowstone. First, please note that unless Yellowstone hits 5.0 or upticks last two weeks, I don't worry seen this pattern five times now in the past few years. But indeed, we did predict a return of quaking to this area, and I'd like to again share some of the members' content from our website. This reviews a prediction of earthquakes at the west coast of the Americas, and is from February 22nd of this year. But if you think back to what was happening in 2013, 2012, a lot of big earthquakes near Baja, El Salvador, Central, other parts of Central America, we haven't seen those. And if you'll remember, and uh, this is purely just a reminder, we were saying that I thought that this was tied heavily to the tropical storm season. And right now, it's Indian cyclone time, and uh, before that it was typhoon time. And then after that it'll come back to uh, the parts of the Western world. But this is where you see the quakes now in Indonesia, New Zealand, places like that where you are seeing the tropical events. And we have not seen that earthquake activity near Baja, Mexico, Central America, since the last time it was tropical storm season there. And I'm just willing to bet that as the temperature warms up in this part of the world and the tropical storms come back, especially where they come back one after another right there off the west coast is at the southwest coast of Mexico. I think that when that season starts to return, we will also see a return in earthquakes to that area. You, you guys uh, have, any, have any thoughts on that? I mean, it's just simply a matter of the energy. And if, if, we, if we think about the fact that, you know, those, that counterclockwise, that clockwise, you know, we believe that is a function of a magnetic loop. Just like we see the arcs coming out of a positive sunspot umbra or going into a negative sunspot umbra, or the other way around. There's probably these magnetic arcs that we can't see in our atmosphere. We could probably detect them if we were out far enough. But they connect high and low pressure. These are the strongest points of magnetism on the Earth at that point. The strongest you know, in terms of energy in the atmosphere. This is no different than a sunspot on the sun, where it has more magnetism, it has more energy, it has the potential to create these electric discharges. Now on the sun, we call it a solar flare. Here, we call it a terrestrial gamma flash, or a sprite, or an elf. 
It's a good analogy. They probably they probably should have come up with different names than than uh, a soda pop and Santa's little helper uh, for for those high high atmosphere energies. But I, I I really do believe that. And if if you have been watching long enough to sit there and say, hey, you're right. The quakes have been more towards New Zealand, more towards Indonesia than they have been towards Mexico or Central America, at least in the last few months. Where the storms are, let's keep this in mind because it's not that far away. It's a month and a half, two months before we start seeing the heat coming back. That's really not tropical storm season yet here, but it's getting to the point where it's close. And I really think that that's when you're going to see the earthquakes come back to this part of the world. Indeed, the time has passed and the earthquakes have returned to this area as the storms begin to roll through and the temperature rises. I do expect an intensification through storm season. Now nobody can tell you when the big one is coming and if they do, they're lying. But if you live out west like my sister Kaylin, I've had my eye on you guys for quite some time. Perhaps you should as well. Shots of our star? Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe everyone.